Welcome back. So now that you guys kind of understand why I made this get result of page function, we're going to try and use it. And I made it again to reuse it all over the controller code. So every time that I in my um, beautiful syllabus setup want to get the page result back, I just have to call this function now. And the first place we're going to look at it is the search. The search has a few neat areas that we can talk about. The first one is that I added what we call a watch in, in the Angular setup. And that's kind of a way for me to say, whenever this guy's changed, I want to be notified. I want to be told um, that it had to change. So whenever the search field, which is this guy right here on the scope, whenever that changes, I'm going to be told in this function right here. Now the third parameter I've added here is just so that I can do what we call deep diving, so that even though the search, um, if it's one of its properties inside the search that changes, I'll still be notified. So it kind of figures out, even though it should be an array of items inside one item, it'll still notify me. But if you add the true, beware. It might give you performance issues, but in our case, it's so simple, it won't matter at all. So it'll work for me. So whenever I do, whenever, whenever I change something inside my search field now, this guy will be notified and this function will be called. And all it's pretty much doing is just right now calling the get result page with a number of one, which is this guy. And then I get a new page set up back and the UI will update. So let's see how it looks in the actual HTML code. If we go down here to the search area, I have an input field and the ng model is just the search.value. And going back to my controller, that value is the same one that I sent for the search query field. So that's how those two are bound together. So whenever I do a change here, the ng model will change. Let me show you this in the actual HTML code, uh, sorry, in the HTML view. When I write, for instance, 2016, I wait a second and boink, the data gets back here. Now the delay is not because the server is slow. It's actually because I asked it to have a delay. Let's have a look at that because I don't want it to send requests whenever I'm still typing. I don't want it to send until I'm done typing. So it won't send any request until a second after I stop typing. Dunk, that was the request. So how did I actually do that? It's very, very simple. I just add ng model options of debounce of a second. Maybe a second is too much. So let's just cut this down to uh, maybe 100 milliseconds instead. Let's save that. And let's try again to start searching, just to show you. Whenever I write something, let's write uh, 2016 again, and it'll show me the search. So it's a way for me to say, don't send any information to the controller until the 100 milliseconds have passed, unless the guy stopped writing, right? So that's a way for us to make sure we don't send too many requests to the backend. That's kind of all it took for me to do now um, pagination with the search field. Next, we're going to have a look at how we do it with the sorting.